Most of you, or at least some of you, may or may not know who the Animaniacs are. The misadventures of the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sisters, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. But what if I told you that just like the Magic School Bus, the Animaniacs had a pilot episode very different and much more darker than the final product that you that the public will never ever see. Well, in this story, a former employee E. He talks about his experiences with the Animaniacs pilot episode. So, join me as we recount the tale of the Animaniacs pilot episode. Let's begin. We all remember the show Animaniacs. Back in the 90s, you'd come home from school and sit on the couch and enjoy it. Life was simple then, and so were we. But what a lot of people don't know exactly what the show was about. There were ideas, so, but the truth is, there was only one person who knows. And that is the creator, Steven Spielberg. I say this because I worked for the Spielberg estate as an intern briefly in the mid-90s. Steven was a eccentric man, to say the best. Sometimes you could say something seemingly innocuous and his disposition would turn on a dime. The, he beat the idea behind the show is that there were three children trapped in a water tower. That was how he originally pitched it to Warner Brothers. It seems a little odd to think about, not anything like a comedy show, but that's because there was a pilot episode of the show that only about five or six people have seen. I know because I was one of the few who have seen it, and there were only three promotional copies released. Two were destroyed and feel that it would that if it actually hit television. It would destroy Steven Spielberg and the and co-creator Tommy Wingo's careers in the process because it was far too disturbing for daytime kids programming. Rumor has it, Spielberg still keeps the copy in his private office in Los Angeles, California. If you ever ask him about it, he'll abruptly change the subject and tell you to never mention it again. I suppose I should confess to you that I actually have the other remaining copy of the tape. I didn't destroy it. I told them I smashed it with a hammer, but in reality it's sitting in my garage. I may release it one of these days, but it will have to be a few years after Spielberg has passed on. As he knows who I am, I don't want to get sued or lose my animation career. So, the episode starts as normal. You see the three Wimbunks' creatures singing the intro song. It's time for Animaniacs, and we're zany to the max. So to sit back and relax, you'll laugh until you last. We're Animaniacs. What's weird is that the voice actors, whom I personally never met because we sent the audio out to a third party studio, Sound really dismal in the pilot episode. There was also lyrics about pay for play contracts that was never meant to be funny. Each of the cast members of the show was in a non binding legal concept that could be terminated at any time because Mr. Spielberg frequently insisted on these forms of contracts. I remember it. I tried talking him out of the deal because it was concerning, but he insisted on it multiple times. There was a part in the song where they sing Anna Maney, totally insane, and something thing would go in there that was new every week. Well, here it just sounded like hearts are grainy. He sees a pixel of a dead chicken or something. It was really disturbing. I don't understand the humor. The whole show tightened up its humor when it was finally finalized and released to the public because this was never 
meant to be a comedy. The story behind the original p so was supposed to be that the characters were locked away in the water tower until they escaped, now destined to roam the lot and drive the Warner Brothers studio employees mad. This wasn't a joke. There really is a Warner Brothers water tower on the Warner Bros. lot, but it doesn't produce water. They have a separate mainline for their liquid transfers, and this is just a prop for looksies. No one has ever actually been inside the water tower except a few close ex convicts of the studio executives. Rumors in include the idea that it houses piles of fake money, leftover parts from various Warner Brothers projects, and something that you could hear the sound of something moving in there, but it's not water. I've been told from employees that it sounds like a rustling, a grinding, or as though some animal is trapped inside the water tower. Anyways, I just want to tell you that before I continue because otherwise you won't understand the rest of what I'm about to tell you. In this back to the show, you hear an announcer at the start of the tape, and he says, Here at the Warner Brothers studio, the owner is Toyo Energy to come up with new ideas, presenting three new characters, Yakko, Wacko, and Death. Believe it or not, Dot's name was a Winsley Death in the pilot episode. While not spelled the same as Death, it was Death. They also had the last name Death as well, so the characters were Wacko Death, Yakko Death, and Death Death. They also immediately talking, start talking about being Death. See, the thing about the original pilot episode was that Steven wanted three characters to represent the three wise monkeys. If you don't know what that is, it comes from the phrase, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. The screener of this originally enabled audible gaps from the small test room of audiences. Wacko was so and having no eyes. but. Really distorted sockets with damaged capillaries. Yakko had no ears, but you could see small pieces where they were severed down, and ear holes, like where the space would be. The artists had rendered the ear to be highly realistic, to the point that you could see small amounts of detail inside the inner canal. And Dot, or Death, the Warner sister, had no mouth. Not just no mouth, but a missing jaw, which was rendered to sew the space where the mouth bone connected. She would instead, and I'm not kidding you, hold her jaw to her face and move it up and down anytime she wanted to speak. So good to see you today, Dot quote unquote said. But the hand holding the jaw moved up and down in a downright sickening fashion. At this point, I remember in great detail two people left the lot and drove home, feeling they would get fired by Mr. Spielberg if they spoke out. The narrator continued on. But the three characters were too grisly and disturbing, so they were locked away into the Warner Brothers Tower. This is probably what you've seen in the revised intro of the final ISO, which had a more comedic bend to it. Most of the jokes in the pilot were relating to each character's grisly deformity. Wacko would stumble around blind, occasionally falling onto sharp objects or getting locked in a closet and crying to be let out. Yakko would just keep saying, What? What? and struggled to listen, feeling his own ear holes, trying to figure out why there was no sound. The announcer says something really, really weird near the end of the pilot. And the worst part is, they don't even know they're dead. Three lost children left to wonder the Warner Brothers lot restlessly, 
looking for a vessel to repel their damaged souls. The idea behind the soul was that the three characters would torment and hunt the people on the lot as security constantly tried to lock them up. At the end of every episode, and I'm not kidding you when I say this, they would be killed again. The idea, Steven said, was to kill them every episode, and then have them come back in the next episode not knowing how they died. At the end of this episode, they were stumbling around murmuring and tripping over on things before the obese, deceptive, mad security guard catches them in a net and stubs them back into the Warner Tower. The ending is the most disturbing of all. You just hear them crying, like human cries, but sometimes animal, begging to be let out of the water tower as it is set on fire. You could hear it burning and one of them yelling that he or she is in plastic, sees yakko death or wacko death or death death and all things are death. This continues for a good three minutes of constant burning and screaming. I remember one of them even saying that it was being boiled alive. Come to think of it, I remember a joke earlier in the pilot about turning the water tower temperature up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't know, that's enough to melt human skin. Steven Spielberg and the rest of the writers never talked about it after that fateful day. And to this day, nobody knows what's exactly inside the Warner Bros. Tower. Some have suggested that they keep these screeners in here. Not as jokes, but, but rather to show indifference in respect to their art. I do know that security is very tight around that pond a lot. And if you get too close to the towel, you'll hear those noises. They're keeping something or someone in there. I just know it. But I can never get close enough to find out. And since I'm one of the few people with the clearance to look, I might one of these days. It might be just a rumor or a joke. But I can tell you that there are some not funny things that go on here. And that's why they gave us non-disclosure agreements when we walk for the big W.